Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and the GD match results of two medieval Turkics from Mongolia. Uh, I believe that one of them is Turkic and the other one is Mongolic. I'm making this assumption based on uh, their GD match results, but I'll let you figure that out for yourself. Uh, the individual who I believe is Mongolic is ULI002, I labeled him as Mong. The individual who I believe is Turkic is UGU001, I labeled him as Turk. I'm very transparent with my naming system. Uh, they both have paternal lineage J2A, which is actually a, a very West Asian paternal lineage. And let's begin the video. We are going to start with uh, the appearance of the Turk. So the Turk has got dark brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose and black hair. Uh, his hair shape prediction based on two SNPs is that he has curly or wavy hair. His eye shape prediction based on nine SNPs is that he has South Asian or Amerindian or Estonian eye shape. That's why I depicted him looking kind of racially ambiguous here. Uh, not necessarily Eastern Eurasian, not necessarily Western Eurasian. That's kind of what it seems like that he looked like. He does not have blue eye haplotype 1 or any of the blue eye haplotypes that follow. However, he does have some genotypes in the OCA2 region that not only do they predict lighter coloring, not only do they lead to lighter color, they also predict having BH1 or BH2. So he has these genotypes that are commonly linked with BH1 and BH2, but he does not have BH1 or BH2 themselves. He just seems to have these uh, light color variants in OCA2 region, but all of that, all of this considered, it is still not enough to give him a lighter eye color than dark brown. He still has dark brown eyes, despite all this. Uh, he has darker skin and other traits, non-European genotypes in SLC2045, SLC45 with twin KTLG. Uh, these are the big reasons. These, this is one of the really big reasons why his eye color prediction is that it's dark brown. It's partly because of these genotypes. And based on his genotypes in ASIP and IRF4, he seems to have lighter skin shade and other traits. He does not have European hunter gatherer blue eye and pale skin and red hair variant in IRF4. And he's not genotyped for EDAR, so we don't know what he has for EDAR. Now we're moving on to the phenotype of our Mong. Uh, not much was present in the files, so we don't have a, a lot to discuss here. He has brown color eyes instead of dark brown, which was the predicted phenotype for our Turk. Uh, he has snub-shaped nose and he has black hair. He does not have BH2 uh, or BH1 or BH4 uh, or BH3. Actually, since he doesn't have BH1, we also know that he doesn't have any of the blue eye haplotypes that follow. Uh, he does have European light color variants and SLC 45A2 and Keto G, which did contribute to him scoring brown eyes instead of dark brown. And he has two derived East Asian variants in EDAR, so this would affect him in terms of his uh, facial traits. It would influence him to have more East Asian facial traits. For hair shape prediction, his hair shape prediction is straight. And for the eye shape prediction, this was done with only five SNPs. Keep in mind, uh, five SNPs is not quite a lot when it comes to facial morphology. He is predicted to have Oceanian, followed by East Asian, followed by Amerindian, so very East Eurasian eye shapes. For the GED match portion of the video, I'm going to show you both individuals. We're going to start with Turk. This is what the Turk scores with Eurogenes K13. Very interesting that he's scoring 5.5% West Asian and 11.5% North Atlantic. Uh, this is very different from what you're going to see with the Mongol. Uh, the Mongol is not scoring any North Atlantic whatsoever there. So the Turk scoring North Atlantic, what that means is the Turk has some step, uh, has some step or maybe Sarmatian ancestry, uh, which which they do, they do have. Turkic people have absorbed Sarmatians as they moved into Central Asia. Uh, with the Oracle, he's getting more or less a mixture of Tuvinian plus West Scottish. So a mixture of Turkic plus Scottish or a mixture of Turkic plus some kind of um, something more Western. This is definitely a Turkic result, right? Uh, this would be a very atypical result for somebody who's Mongol. A lot of steppe, a lot of Caucasian, a lot of Northeast European on this result. And with the oracle here for MDLPK16, getting modeled as Altain plus Mansi or actually Altain plus Hanti. Maybe this mo this result is not so clear in terms of what his ancestry is. But trust me, if you look at all the other results, this is very clearly a Turkic individual. This is what he scores with MDLP World 22. Uh, as you can see, he's scoring a lot of uh, Atlantic Mediterranean also in the Iranian, also Northeast European. And with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Tuvan plus Tatar from Lithuania, line number three. This is what he scores with Pandiana LK2, um, K10 engine. As you can see, 12% CHG is a lot. It's as much CHG as some Southwest Europeans, actually. 
uh, a lot of CHG, a lot of uh, Western Hunter Gatherer admixture too. So this individual has a lot of European admixture, which is very typical for Turkic people. And with the Oracle, you can see line number 3 through 20. It's basically a mixture of Altaians plus some kind of European groups such as Czechs, Norwegians, Icelandics, Belarusians, English. A mixture of Turkic plus Northern European is what it looks like based on this result. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Once again, this looks like a very Turkic result. Uh, there is even a little bit of ancestral North Eurasian here, and there is even a little bit of Natufian here. So there is Natufian comes from the CHG admixture, of course, from the uh, from the Southern Mediterranean admixture that they have. And with the two-way Oracle, he's getting more or less a mixture of Mongol plus 30% step early Middle Bronze Age, clearly Mongol plus a lot of Yamna input is what it looks like based on the Oracle. And with Gidrosia K3, this is what he scores. He's still overwhelmingly East Eurasian. There's still 72% East Eurasian. And early Turkic people were overwhelmingly East Eurasian. However, there is 27% West Eurasian present here. And that's important because this 20, this 27 percent West Eurasian is what separates the Turks, the Turkic people from the Mongolics and the other uh, people who originate from East Asia. Now we'll be taking a look at uh, the results of the Mongol. As you can see, the Mongol is scoring no North Atlantic whatsoever, absolutely no North Atlantic admixture. Uh, he is, however, scoring more West Asian and even West Mediterranean. Uh, with the Eurogenes K13, uh, K the results are not so clear. This is not the calculator that really separates where you can really tell one individual is Turkic, the other is Mongolic. However, even with Eurogenes K13, with the Oracle, the closest to this individual is a mixture of Altaians plus various Southeast Asian groups, very different result from uh, the Turkic individual. This is what the uh, the Mongol scores with MDLPK16. And with the Oracle, once again, you can see a very Mongolian result. It looks like a mixture of Mongol plus Basque. Uh, obviously, that's not the case, but it's a very Mongolian result. And with Pandiene LK10, once again, a lot less CHG. If you remember, the Turk was scoring 13% CHG and 13% Western Hunter Gatherer. Uh, it's very different, very different case for the Mongol. The Mongol is a lot less European here. And with the Oracle, they actually get more of the Zaltaian plus Cambodian. If you remember, the Turk was getting more of a mixture of Zaltaian plus Europeans. The Mongol is getting more of the Zaltaian plus Cambodian. This is where the difference is. Uh, there is a lot of affinities here to Southeast Asians and uh, East Asians in general. This is what they score with Ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, actually, you can see less Ancestral North Eurasian here and more South Eurasian. Uh, I'm thinking this is because there isn't a lot of SNPs that go that go with this result for this calculator. With the Oracle, the closest model is Cambodian plus Steppe in Neolithic. And this is what they score with Gedrosia K3. Obviously, they don't have any Sub-Saharan African admixture. I, I think I would, um, I would just look at the West Eurasian here. So they score 21.1. 0.2% West Eurasian compared to the 27% West Eurasian that the Turkic individual scored, so a lot less West Eurasian and a lot more Eastern. Now we'll be looking at the Mongols' results with my trade predictor. So uh, the Mongol has a genotype in OXTRs RS5357.6, which leads to uh, sociopathy and reduced OXTR expression. Uh, the sociopath variants in this variation are most typical for East Asians. So, <clears throat> if you're an East Asian watching this video, most likely you have the same genotype as him here. If you're a white person or a Sub-Saharan African, most likely you have the opposite genotype. Most likely you don't have any sociopath variants. He has AC genotype in this variation, which leads to slight decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Not really. <coughs> I write here that it's slight decrease. It's actually a slight increase. So, uh, relative to the average, it's a slight increase. Uh, but relative to the, I think it's the AA genotype, it's a slight decrease. So relative to the average, slight increase in the risk of type 1 diabetes. And um, AA genotype in this variation, which means slightly decreased odds of Alzheimer's. And he does not have the G allele here that would, that would uh, prevent myopia. So no G allele in this variation. Higher odds of myopia, higher odds of nearsightedness. No micro P, you know what that is. I'm not going to pronounce that because it's YouTube and I have to stay monetizer. Uh, really PG-13. We're going to look at polygenic risk scores for the Mongol. And the Mongol has the Mongol has slightly below average odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans and pretty much dead average odds of schizophrenia for Sub-Saharan Africans. Slightly below average odds of Alzheimer's. And I think nothing for diabetes was found in the file. It's a pretty small file. Okay, so we're going to reset all that. And now we're going to look at the Turk. We're going to look at the Turk now. 
I'm gonna ask us to enter a name in a little bit, in a couple of seconds. We're gonna look at the Turk. Okay, so the Turk has GG in Comte's Val variation meaning Val Val or what are your genotype? Higher activity of the Comte enzyme and quicker breakdown of dopamine. Right, so this guy has more dopamine. No, no, no. Uh, quicker breakdown means less dopamine, right? So this guy has less dopamine, advantages in stress resilience and disadvantages in attention tasks. It's a, a very non-European genotype to have. Not to say that if you're a European and you have GG, it's some, due to some kind of non-European admixture, but I'm just saying the the alternative allele or the derived allele or the A allele is most common in Europeans. So having GG means you don't have any alternative alleles, you don't have any derived alleles here, and you're it's most typical for non-Europeans, like East Asians and Africans. Europeans tend to have uh, the Woriyara genotype instead. This individual has GG here in Pro319 Pro, Pro, Pro no-no-go learner variants, which means higher number of dopamine due to receptor sites and higher odds of schizophrenia, as well as, of course, not being a no-go learner, which is the, the obvious here. Uh, in, case, in case you don't know what being a no-go learner is, uh, it basically has to do with how you respond to stimulus. Uh, stimuli. Uh, so somebody who is a no-go learner tends to withhold. Uh, it means no-go. You don't go, right? It's, it means withholding a response to stimuli even when you probably should, even if there is a stimuli that you probably should respond to. People who are no-go learners tend to not respond to it. However, the, the opposite, which would be uh, this genotype right here, which means not a no-go learner, people like that tend to respond to stimuli that aren't even there. You know, you uh, tend to overreact, basically, to things. Overreacting versus, versus underreacting. That's all. That's the way I see it. Um, he has a genotype in this variation of DRD2, which is implicated in an increased number of dopamine due to receptor sites. Once again, more dopamine due to receptor sites. Uh, it seems like this individual has just a lot more dopamine due to receptor sites than what's typical. Uh, kind of like me, I also have the same genotype in all these, in all these variations. Uh, I guess you would also need to see what's here and here, but it looks like... Uh, it looks like this individual might have a pretty high score for schizophrenia, just based on what I see on the screen right now. He has CC genotype here in DRD1, which is the typical genotype. It leads to slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions. Maybe not. Maybe doesn't have such a high score for schizophrenia because of that. Uh, he has a genotype in, in RS686 of dopamine receptor D1, which leads to higher likelihood of autism. Once again, I don't know how DRD1 has anything to do with autism, how dopamine in general has anything to do with autism. I've seen, uh, I've encountered this fact, and I don't understand it. For some reason, some doctors prescribe antipsychotics for people with autism. Like, why? What are you doing? What's the point? Are you their their life sucks as it is? Are you trying to make them fat and and lazy too now? Are you trying to like what's the point? Why are you ruining their already messed up heads by giving them antipsychotics? I don't understand it. It, it doesn't help anything. They are autistic. They don't have a dopamine issue. They have a brain neuron connectivity issue. You don't fix that by giving them. But I I digress. Okay, I, I'm going on a, on a tangent here. Uh, this is the Turk, right? So the Turk has CC genotype in this variation of DRD3, which is implicated in higher odds of OCD and intellectual disability. And he has AEA genotype in this variation of DRD3, which is increases the risk of autism on autistic personality traits. Once again, I don't understand how dopamine has anything to do with autism, but it is what it is. Uh, this individual is heterozygous for the European lactose persistence mutation and is probably not lactose intolerant. This is huge. So... Not even every European has the European lactose persistence mutation. Like, I don't have it at all. I don't have any European lactose persistence mutation alleles here. And this individual has one. So, uh, clearly, this is a sign of um, European admixture in this Turk. Uh, in his case, it's a sign of corded wear admixture that Turkic people do have. And for the empathy gene, he's got GG in this version of OXTR, which means two variants for higher levels, for lower, excuse me, excuse me, lower levels of empathy, just like the Mongol. And uh, not a carrier for any of the hemochromatosis variants. TT here in RS669, which leads to slightly decreased risk of Alzheimer's. Doesn't have Alzheimer's. Uh, for the miscellaneous section, no fat gene variants in FTOs, RS99, 39, 609, probably not obese. Well, you know, in their time period, none of them were obese. It was very difficult to be obese if you're like a nomad living in the steppe. 
in the medieval period. Um, and we're going to check his polygenic risk scores right now for the polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, he's got a um, average odds of schizophrenia, he's got a slightly higher than average odds of diabetes, and he's got a slightly lower than average odds of Alzheimer's. That's all there is for this individual. Actually, let's look at the Oka 2 blonde hair and blue eyes panel. And this is I remarked, I made a remark on this when I was going through the uh, through the genome, um, the phenotype panel, but we need to talk about this, right? So he's got uh, gen genotype for BH1 is undetermined, that's not in the file. However, based on his genotype here, he most likely does not have blue haplotype 1. Right? If he does not have blue haplotype 1, he cannot have blue haplotype 2. And he does not have blue haplotype 2. <coughs> well, I I'm saying cannot, but there is uh, there's these linkages that occur, and really you can, but it's just really un unprobable. And he also does not have blue, ha blue haplotype 3. Obviously, if you don't have blue haplotype 2, you're probably not going to have blue haplotype 3 either. And uh, by the way, since... Uh, since the BEH3 mutation is the most recent, there is less dislinkages that happen in this variation. It's it's very, like, I would say that the phylogeny is consistent uh, like 95% of the time when it comes to BEH2 and BEH3. It's very strong. Uh, the dislinkages that, it, it, there was less time for any kind of dislinkage to occur uh, because it's a recent mutation. But BEH1 and BEH2, there is a couple situations I've seen where the individual has BH2 without BH1. So maybe the rate for maybe the rate of phylogeny for BH2 and BH1 would be more like 80 or 75%. I don't know. Probably no, higher. It would be higher. But for BH2 and BH3 it's very strong. So this individual however despite not having blue hepatitis 2, right? He has a genotype in this variation which means lighter coloring and likely has blue hepatitis 2. So he has some he has some uh, genotypes that are predictive of BH2, which is kind of interesting. I, I don't know how that is, how that happened, but it's pretty interesting that uh, that's the case. Maybe, uh, maybe I was a little bit too rash in my decision to um, to claim that this variation is predictive of BH2. I just noticed a pattern, right? I, I do videos, I do I, I analyze data, and I notice patterns. And I notice a pattern that, hey, this variation seems to be linked with BH2. And that's why I wrote here that it's predictive of BH2. But in this case, as you can see, there is some discongruency here. Well, thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download both of these samples in 23 me format from link, which is in the description of the video. And uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.